All right, guys, so I have a kind of fun one for you today. Um, this Marlin came into me, uh, came into my shop and has a split barrel. Um, so if you look, uh, I'll do a close up here in a minute, but basically what looks like happened, because there's a bulge in the barrel plus a split, looks like a squib load, probably maybe powder was wet, I don't know. Primer sent the bullet far enough down the barrel, another bullet got fired behind it caused a bulge and eventually caused a split. But uh, anyways, we're gonna go over different ways that we might be able to fix this or if there's not a solution to this one. So uh, let me put the gun on the vise and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is a split in the barrel and I want to show you kind of my thought process is on, on this. I haven't went through this gun yet, so I don't know what the solution is, but kind of walk through it, I guess. So obviously there's a split in the barrel um, my initial thought process is if we're going to go about this in the most economical way, as far as the cheapest, most affordable way, uh, we're going to look at shortening the barrel to be on that crack and then seeing that if it's legal, um, first and foremost, second, make sure that we can actually, uh, do that sort of work on here. So I can see the crack right here. About right there is where I'm going to make a mark. That's the farthest point that I can see the crack going. And uh, keep in mind that there's a good chance it goes a lot farther than that. But initially, before I break out the bore scope, before I get it tested, like as far as uh, non-destructive testing. So keep in mind that this isn't the end-all be-all answer to this. I'm just, I'm just getting some initial going through my thought process. Uh, the way the ATF defines barrel length is from the face of the bolt to the end of the barrel. So I'm just going to get a rough estimate. And right now that's at about 17 in inches. So I know I have a little bit to work with. Um, if that would have been like 15 and a half, then I would just be calling the customer right now and having that discussion. But since it's 17, that means it's possible we might be able to work with this. So next I'm going to take out the bore scope and see how far in the crack goes with the bore scope. Okay, so we got the bore scope out. Now we're gonna look at that crack from the inside. It's pretty, uh, pretty nasty crack. It's going back, let's see, still going. So I'm gonna go a little bit past where I think it ends just to be safe. And basically what I'm doing is just putting a mark with my hand uh, or with my finger holding that bore scope and seeing how far in that is. So I'm showing it about, we'll say three and a half inches to be safe. It's My finger goes about three and a quarter. If it becomes close, then I'll look from there. But uh, now I'm gonna measure from the end of the barrel three and a quarter inches, or I said three and a half, I guess. So if I go to three and a half, I'm still gonna be at about 16, 16 and three quarters, cause that was at 17 inches, or a little, a little bit more than that actually. But uh, that tells me that we have enough barrel to actually chop this off. Now, because this is, I'm showing the crack at about 16 and three quarter, right? Um, I could send this off to have some testing done to make sure that the crack doesn't go further. And I actually might do that because my dad has some uh, non-destructive testing um, methods that he has for his work. But I'm probably going to play it safe and go back as far back as the legal limit will allow me. So about 16 inches and I'll probably give it a eighth inch, quarter inch just to give me some warm fuzzies as far as if I end up making any mistakes or whatever, uh, still have room to work. So one thing to keep in mind if you have to deal with something similar, especially if it's a lever action, it's not as simple as just shortening the barrel, crowning it, recutting the front dovetail. You have a lot of extra cuts you need to do, um, or a couple extra cuts, which that's setup time, time equals money. So that's where a repair like this can really start to add up and become expensive. But anyways, so now at this point, I'm gonna give the customer a call and see uh, what she wants to do. 
if she wants to cut it down to the short, uh, to that 16 inches. Um, also keep in mind, since this is a Marlin and it's a full length mag tube, I'm also going to have to shorten this. But when you're shortening a lever action mag tube, be smart about it. Um, so there's, oh, I guess there's a couple ways you could look at this. You can either shorten it on this end and re redo those cuts, or you can shorten it on the receiver end and you just have to re cut that for the forearm. Either way, there's a little bit of milling on the mag tube that you have to do as well. But uh, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and give that customer a call and see what she wants to do. But if you guys have any questions or if you had experiences in the past, please let me know. This is kind of a unique, I guess it's kind of a unique uh, problem to have as far as squib load. Another bullet falls it up, causes that ring in the barrel, and then splits the barrel in the end. Definitely, if you have something like this, you don't want to fire it. Take to your gunsmith, a capable gunsmith that can take care of it and look at it and tell you if it's safe. But uh, anyways, please let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching.